Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Vicki McDonald, and it's my great privilege to be the IFLA president for 2023 to 2025. And I'd like to welcome you to our second uh, town hall for April. And um, I can see that we have lots of colleagues from across the globe joining us this evening. And if you could put in the chat where you're coming from, that would be terrific. Um, you can also see on the screen at the moment, there is uh, a link for the interpretation. You can either use the link or scan the QR code and then follow, follow the links and choose the language that you would like to listen in as well. So that uh, interpretation option is there as well for you today. I'd also like to welcome my colleague Sharon. And, and hello, Sharon. Thank you for joining us. Hello. Good to be here. Thank you. So, um, to yeah, so just, just to say, I'm the um, Secretary General. Normally I'm based in The Hague, but I'm actually in London with family this week. So I'm calling from a relatively sunny London, which is great. <laughs> Good to be here. Terrific. Well, it is beautiful weather in Brisbane at the moment. We are in autumn and we've had a really lovely day here as well. So thank you for joining us this evening. Um, and it is evening in, in Brisbane, of course, as well. So um, thank you. I can see the um, all across the globe, we've got people joining us. And I can see that there's governing board colleagues who've joined us as well this evening. So hello to Delara. Leslie, Tapia, and Loida, and I'm sure others will join us as we move along as well. So we're, um, we have a number of things that we'd like to um, talk with you about this evening. And Sharon, do you want to take us through how a town hall works? Sure. So um, some of you will be very familiar with the town hall. And certainly I lived and worked in the US for several years, and it was a very common way of bringing together a group of people and very much giving the agenda over to the participants. Um, it's not lots of formal presentations, although we will be talking about some things, but it's really an opportunity for you to ask questions, any question you want, certainly on the subjects, but really more broadly on anything around IFLA. Um, just to be um, clear as well, if you, know, if you don't think we've answered the question clearly enough, please do ask it again, because if you haven't understood it, there's a good chance that um, others won't have understood it as well. And as a global organization, it's really important that we uh, we try and, and and really you know make sure everybody understands and gets to to give their views. So please do use this, um, and it is very much part of our ongoing commitment. We're looking at different ways of communicating with our members, um, and I hope that you are, are all appreciating. Certainly, we've had some really great feedback from members. Um, about the uh, really more frequent and I, I think very sort of open, frank communication that Vicky has been sending out to, to all members, um, personalised um, information. So I we would very much welcome feedback and we're all looking for new ways of making sure that you feel uh, very much that you have a stake in IFRA's future and that you're involved in 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 what's happening you understand and that you can really ask any question you like so please do ask questions we're here and also send us your ideas so thank you thank you thank you very much Sharon and um, so we're very much as part of the agenda we're going to cover a couple of topics and there's sections where we'll stop and pause for questions and answers so uh, we'll be able to look at those and and cover those off and then at the end we'll also have an opportunity to um, answer some further questions as well but the first thing we want to talk about is looking forward to the IFLA Information Futures Summit um, it is a new event format for IFLA and it's very much about trying something new um, I'm quite excited about it we're going to be having the, the summit in my hometown here in Brisbane, in Australia. Uh, it's a beautiful time to be visiting Australia. It will be spring. And, um, and so really looking forward to welcoming colleagues from across the world to come to Brisbane. What's different about this summit in relation to the annual World Library and Information Congress that it's very much a curated program. We've carefully curated the speakers and the themes that will be covered in the summit across the three days. It is a global event. Uh, oh, I think we might need to go back a couple of slides, please, Stephen. Um, 
we go back again. Yeah, thank you. So um, it, it is a, a global event, and I just really want to emphasise that we're welcoming everybody to come to this uh, summit. We've had a couple of questions where people have thought that only one or two people can come from an association, but it's very much an open event and encouraging everybody to come along. So if we go to the next slide, um, we have an image of um, of the website, I think. Yes, so here is the, the home page of the website. And if you go to the URL is 2024.ifla.org. And I'm sure Stephen will put that into the um into the chat for you as well. So thank you, Stephen. So um, I know some of you may have already covered, joined some of the briefings, but we're also going to cover off on some of more information around the program. The goal of the summit is very much covered by the title. It's all about information futures, so exploring the trends in information and knowledge and how we can work together. So picking up my theme of Stronger Together, the presidential theme, but also the place of libraries in the future and how information and knowledge is very much part of that work. So, And I think what will come through in the summit is how by working together we have much stronger outcomes. So on this slide, you can also see some uh, an image of the Brisbane Central Business District, which is where the summit will take place. On the left-hand side, we have the Brisbane Convention and Exhibition Centre. Um, we have um, my library, the State Library of Queensland is located nearby, a five-minute walk. And then across the bridge, the Central Business District. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But you can see it's a very accessible city. The river winds through Brisbane, and that's what we've picked up in the logo. So you can see the logo, the squiggle of the Maywa, the Brisbane River uh, that winds its way through Brisbane. So that's represented in the, um, in the uh, logo as well. So let's talk a little bit about the speakers. The speakers are the main act of this summit as well. And um, we have intentionally uh, brought a, together a range of speakers. And perhaps you've seen the short video that we released on social media challenges around the channels, rather around the five reasons to come to the summit. And I'm going to cover off on a couple of those now. So the first one is our inspiring speakers. And you can see from this slide that we have have speakers from within the library field, but from also outside the library field. And it's been quite intentional to have a cross-section of uh, experts joining us at the summit. We have, um, you can see there, uh, Carla Hayden, Shepong, uh, and Jean Tan from Singapore, Masood Kokar from uh, Leeds, and, and also Kate Swad and Carla Hayden from the Library of Congress. But from outside the library field, we have a range of experts who will cover a range of topics as well. The types of topics are very much related to the broad theme of information and knowledge. They'll cover things like the future of information, digital social justice, information integrity, heritage law, copyright, open science, and of course the hot topic that everybody's talking about at the moment, artificial intelligence, and much more. So as we are progressing in the lead up to the summit, we are adding more speakers to the uh, website and in, um, we'll be sharing more information over the coming weeks as well. So if we go then to the next slide, um, the second um, really key reason to visit the summit is the opportunities to engage. As I mentioned, we have developed a curated program with those fantastic speakers, which we just showed you. But the other key thing that we wanted to achieve with our program is opportunities to engage so that when we have uh, our plenary speakers, there's an opportunities to unpack what's been discussed, and to think about how, as librarians, no matter where we come from around the world, how it impacts on the work that we do to deliver services, but also how we can plan for the future. There'll be a really strong focus on me making the connection between the key trends and ideas and what this means for libraries. You may have also seen in recent months, we had a call for Ignite Talks, and uh, we have a number of sessions where colleagues from across the globe will have an opportunity to share through their Ignite Talk. So seven minutes to share with us the, um, the work that they're doing. And they, again, will be around the whole theme of information and knowledge and trends. So we were really, um, really pleased with the uh, number 
of responses we had to the call for Ignite Talks, and uh, our working group is already uh, reviewing those, and by the end of April, we'll be contacting people to indicate if they've been selected to present an Ignite Talk. And um, I saw earlier that Philip Kent um, is uh, on the line this evening, and Philip is leading that particular work for us in assessing the Ignite Talks that we've had. We'll also have a, a range of different opportunities to engage in the program. We're trialling some different things. Um, so as you may know, we're currently undertaking a review of the Congress model. So this summit gives us an opportunity to try some different formats. So we'll have the plenary sessions, but also uh, panel sessions and something called open fish bowls. So I think that'll be something different for us to try as well with the program. So if we go to the next slide, um, a real highlight of the summit will be the releasing the IFLA trend report for 2024. And this is the first major release of a trend report in a decade. So quite a major update. Um, and we've been working with two internationally renowned uh, experts in the field of information and knowledge, uh, Pref Professor Michael Deswani and Associate Professor Kim Osman from the Queensland University of Technology. And Michael and Kim have done a fantastic job of scanning uh, trend reports from across the globe to identify this single trend report on information mm -hmm. and knowledge. They've uh, also been working with our uh, steering committee with representatives from across the globe because we really wanted to ensure that we actually represented the global scene and, uh, and have that focus around information and knowledge. In the coming months, we'll also be releasing some scenarios for libraries around these trends, which actually gives an opportunity to be thinking about those trends before you attend the summit in September. So the trend report provides a really key reference point and actually sets the context for much of the summit. So I, I am personally very excited about the trend report. I know in my library, the State Library of Queensland, we do use these um, trend reports to influence our strategic planning. And I think this document will be a really key part of that planning going forward for us. So, um, and as I said, that will be released at the summit as well. So we go to the next slide. The other important uh, report that will be released at the summit is the new IFLA strategy for 2024 to 2029. So I hope you may have taken the opportunity over the last few months to respond to the five Pulse surveys that we've had. And that's where we've sought um, input from our IFLA members, volunteers and colleagues on what they see as the priorities for libraries moving forward. Um, next week, the governing board will meet in The Hague and we'll be discussing the first draft of the, of the IFLA strategy. So again, for me personally, in the work that I do, um, this strategy that IFLA has also influences our strategic planning. So it'll be an important uh, report to, to release at the summit as well. As I'm talking, if you've got questions, do please put them into the chat and we'll break um, before we go on to the next topic to look at some of those questions. The other um, part of the summit is, of course, our tours of libraries. Um, although um, this isn't a willy, we do know that when librarians travel the world, they love to check out libraries. So uh, we've organised some explorer tours. These are self-guided tours because Brisbane is quite an accessible city, which will enable you to visit a whole range of different libraries. And uh, my colleagues here in Brisbane and southeast Queensland will be at the libraries to to welcome you um, as well. So on this particular slide, we've got three very different libraries. On the left is the uh, Supreme Court building, and you'll have the opportunity to visit the Supreme Court library. The middle image is at the State Library of Queensland, uh, Kuril Dargan, which is our First Nations uh, space. And it's an outdoor space that we have an image of here, a yarning circle uh, around the fire pit. And um, Kuril Dargan is a unique space within Australian libraries, which uh, shares First Nations history and culture, but is also a very welcoming space to community as well. And the image on the right is 
Ipswich Library. So Ipswich is a city just west of Brisbane, very easy to reach through transport. And Ipswich boasts Australia's only children's library. So again, whether you're interested in school libraries, public libraries, uh, state libraries or university libraries, there's a lot to see in the tours. So um, we'll be progressively releasing information on those tours. We're also introducing in Brisbane uh, what we're calling associated events because we know that many sections and committees want to take advantage of being in Brisbane. And so um, they're also listed on our website. So if you go to the program tab on the website, you'll see that there's already some associated events and there'll be more coming in the coming weeks as well. So if we take a look at the next slide, it's um, an, again another great image of Brisbane um, and the Brisbane River. Um, and on the bend where all those trees are is the Botanical Gardens and the Queensland University of Technology. And QUT uh, will be one of the libraries you will be able to visit. We're also interested in doing some different things and enabling you to engage with Brisbane. And we will also be releasing information about Read Brisbane. So uh, this is being led by uh, my colleague, Jan Richards, who is also on the uh, call this evening. And uh, so we are releasing a lot of a list of books that have been written set in Brisbane. And uh, I know many of you will have already heard of Trent Dalton, uh, who wrote Boy Swallow Universe. But there's a whole list of other books that we're sharing with you and encouraging you to share what you think of these books about Brisbane. So again, this will be on our website. Uh, in the in the next week or so as well. So I guess as you're planning to come to Brisbane, you'll be thinking about what will participants take home. Um, so we're very conscious it's a very long way for some people to come to Brisbane, but I know that many people are very excited. It's been on their bucket list forever to come to Australia. Um, so we've also provided you some, um, I guess, some ideas around what you can take home from the summit. As I've said, we've got the trend report, uh, which will give you insights about the future of information, the trends that are occurring across the globe. Oh, we've just lost, there we are. And um, also, as I've said, there's plenty of opportunity for panel sessions, workshops, fish bowls, um, ignite talks to actually um, hear about what other libraries are doing and practical ideas that you can apply to your own institutions and associations. For me personally, I think one of the great things about uh, attending any IFLA event is the opportunity to connect from colleagues across the globe. Of course, we're expecting many Australians to come to their first ever IFLA event, and uh, I'm really looking forward to ha um, having colleagues from Australia there, Asia, Oceania, and across the world. And I think whenever you attend an IFLA event, it's always very energising, and I always come away enthusiastic about the work that we can do in our own libraries and our communities as well. And I'm sure that that will be an outcome of attending the summit as well. Um, so I've just seen a comment, it sounds like a Willick. Well, I guess the big difference with this one is that it's a curated program. So uh, there will be the curated programs as well as the breakout sessions as well. And when we release the program in the next week, you'll see some of the differences in the formats that we'll be, be using as well. So looking to, um, for more, as I've said, there'll be more information shared uh, about this summit. And if we just go to the next slide, um, I do suggest that if you haven't already, you do look at the website 2024.ifla.org, bookmark the URL. Uh, we're releasing a lot of information around the newsletters and also in emails and on social media. And I do en encourage you to uh, share all of this with your colleagues. But as I said at the beginning, really want to emphasise that this will be a um, an event for everybody. There's no limits on who can attend. So I do hope that um, many of you will be able to take the opportunity to come to Brisbane. So we might pause there and Sharon, um, we might take a look at the, the questions if we have any in the, um, in the chat um, as well. Um, 
So I can see there's a question there around the Ignite talks. Um, yes, the Ignite talks have closed. Uh, they were open, I think, for about six weeks. And the, um, the evaluation group is currently reviewing the Ignite talks. And the time frame is for uh, people who uh, submitted will be advised by the end of April around the outcomes of that. Mm -hmm. Um, I can see there's also a comment around the centenary of IFLA, uh, um, which is a few years away yet, so 2027, and I think we'll be sharing some information about that following the April Governing Board meeting as well. So thank you for your question, Winston, uh, but we've certainly already commenced our planning around uh, the, 20, the centenary in 2027. There are a couple of questions on the Q&A. I, so can... I, I might, um, um, Sharon, there's a question here. Can I ask how an individual member can become part of working for IFLA as part of the voluntary services? Um, as part of the volunteer, as, as a volunteer. Well, I, I think there you um, simply need to look. We'll be actually doing the elections fairly soon, um, but it, look at the opportunities of standing and getting involved already in some of the groups and the specialist groups. So I think it depends what you're interested in. Perhaps what you could do is maybe uh, send me an email or a message separately afterwards, uh, the area of interest that you um, you want to look at, and we'll then try and direct you to the right person. Thanks, sure. I would see there's also a, a couple of questions um, asking about um, funding opportunities to attend the summit. So the website does provide some details on several grants that are available at the moment, and we're hopeful that we will be able to provide more grants as well, and uh, we'll update information on the website as they become available and also share that information in our newsletters um, and social media as well. So I can see that we've got Gulchen Krim, um, who are in the chat as well. So Gulchen is part of the organising committee uh, and is also leading the volunteer coordination as well. So thank you, Gulchen, for sharing, uh, joining us today. Uh, Stephen has just added the link for the grants. Uh, so I know a couple of people were asking about those as well. Mm -hmm. And I do think this is going to be a really exciting conference. The trend report will be absolutely fascinating. And what is, again, to differentiate it perhaps from Willick, I only went to one, my first one, which was last year in Rotterdam, is how many speakers we've got coming from as well outside of the library field, but who are in professions and areas connected to the library field. So it will be a much bigger, if you like, it's that big, big picture, a lot of um, plenaries and parallel sessions. So the emphasis on that curation as opposed to lots of different groups organizing things, there will be a real strong narrative thread going through this, looking to the future. And anyone attending this will very much be involved in helping us shape that future, which I think is, is quite an exciting prospect, as well as all the attractions of Australia, which I have to say I'm very excited about and um, hope to take a, a few days leave afterwards to go and visit. Okay. We can always come back to some questions around the summit at the end of the, of the town hall as well, but I think we might move on to the next topic that we wanted to talk about this evening, which is around uh, charity status for IFLA, and you may recall that I, um, I mentioned it in one of our recent updates following a governing board meeting that IFLA is exploring uh, becoming receiving charity status within the Netherlands. Um, it is a legal status, so um, it's it's part of the process that we will need to go through. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about it. Um, it will be part of our General Assembly in June. Um, and in the lead up to June and the General Assembly, we'll be sharing more information about it as well. Um, and I think it's really part of us ensuring that we have a sustainable future for IFLA as well. So if we go to the next slide, um, of course, really what we aim for IFLA is to have a vibrant, inclusive, 
international library field that's long into the future. So really focused on that sustainability. And you may recall in Rotterdam, when I made my first speech as IFLA president, I talked about the focus of the governing board will be on sustainability and ensuring that we actually have a, um, we're well supported into the future financially as well. And, uh, and so to do that and to be a platform for libraries across the globe, we need to be financially sustainable. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about what that means as well. Um, of course, we do have a very bold vision and uh, ambitions for IFLA, and to achieve those ambitions, we need to be healthy and effective. And uh, our volunteers are, are very much part of the work that we achieve and our committees as well. And it's important that we continue to attract a great volunteer committee and uh, to ensure that we're a trusted global library member membership organisation. So I really want to thank you all for the work that you do in enabling IFLA to progress as well. We also um, need to be recognised internationally as a, as a sustainable organisation, and we do that through a lot of our advocacy work as well and forming partnerships. And what we find often in informing in forming partnerships that having a charity status or what is in, known as ANBI status in, in the Netherlands is an important part of forming partnerships. So there we have the Dutch, um, the words for where ANBI comes from, A-N-B-I, but essentially ANBI means public benefit institution. And in Australia, we would call it charity status, and perhaps in your country, you have a, a similar name. So moving to charity status should help us on all fronts, particularly around forming partnerships, but also enhancing our financial sustainability. Um, and it contrasts with our current role as association. Um, and I guess really having the AMBI status opens up so many more possibilities for our partnerships as well. So what this means is it will be a simpler way for us to build partnerships which benefit our IFLA members, volunteers and the communities that they serve. To achieve the ANBI status, um, there's legal requirements in the Netherlands, and one of the key requirements for, um, for achieving the ANBI status is a, an amendment to our statutes. And of course, any amendment to our statutes needs to be uh, taken through our General Assembly, and as I said, that will be held in June. So uh, we um, very much have a purpose of being uh, providing good value to the globe. So we're already very much aligned to the objectives of charity status. And, uh, and so we'll explain more of that in the coming months as well. It also ensures that we've got transparency around our reporting and there'll be some requirements for the governing board. But of course, as a governing board, we've already committed to being very transparent about the work that we do. So I guess we've, you know, what I've said is one of the things is the change to the statute, but it's also really important to think about what it doesn't mean and to acknowledge that. Um, it doesn't change the decision making within the organisation. Members will still retain their voting rights through the General Assembly and there'll be no additional reporting requirements for our committees. It really is the reporting that IFLA will do with its partner organisations through this charity status that would change as well. So the timeline, um, as I did say earlier, the governing board is meeting next week in The Hague. So the governing board will discuss the proposed amendments to the statutes. And then the week commencing the 22nd of April will provide some inf further information around what those changes to the statutes will be. Um, and of course, following every governing board meeting, I always release a statement of what has been discussed at the governing board. And we'll do that again for um, this statute change. In May or in June, we'll again provide some special sessions online where we can talk through the wording of the statute change that we will be proposing, and that will be an opportunity for members to ask questions and to explain it as well. Um, and then the voting for the change to the statute will occur on the 20th of June. 
Um, and following that, depending on the outcome of the voting, we'll then make the formal changes to the statutes. So I really, um, I guess what I really just want to stress that this is a legal requirement within the, the Netherlands to achieve charity status. We are required to have a slight change to the wording in the statutes. Um, and as we progress towards the 20th of June, we will have a number of opportunities to brief members on the proposed statute change. Um, and that can occur after the governing board meets next week as well. So I'm happy to take some questions on that particular topic, and we'll just um, I'll just need to go to the back to the questions. Um, I can see there's a couple of questions around the trend report, so I might go back to those after. But first, just see if we have any questions on the AMBI status. So we do have a question around where will the General Assembly be held? Um, it is a requirement of the of the Netherlands that it is um, held in person as well as online. So it will be delivered as a hybrid event. Um, and of course, we will share details about that in the coming weeks as well. But the date has been set and it is the 20th of June. So they seem to be the only questions specifically around the um, the ANBI status. Um, but as I've said, um, we will provide more information about the ANBI status and the change that's required, and we'll do that following next week's uh, governing board meeting. So Cheryl, we might move on to the next topic then and and, um, and some general updates on the all the work that's happening in The Hague. And across the globe. Well, across across the globe, I think um, yeah. you know the Hague team is a small team that achieves amazing things. But we can only achieve amazing things because of the extraordinary work of our many many volunteers across the world. Um, so yes, yeah, some some general updates really. You know, as I said earlier on, we're not going to try to cover absolutely everything at this town hall, um, although over the course of the year and assuming we get some positive feedback from you all, we will try to go through most of the important events and, and, um, and decisions uh, at these meetings. But before we open up for general questions, I just wanted to share some quick updates on the broader work we're doing and as Vicky said some of the incredible achievements um, and I hope indeed that it's a bit of a celebration really of what we are able to achieve as a federation. So a few examples over the last few months. So thanks to our work another key UNESCO text highlights the role of libraries and this time it's in culture and arts education and these are great reference points for you when you are advocating for the inclusion of libraries and the relevant strategies and ideally in the budgets in your own countries. So pulling on some of these examples and making sure that you're aware of these the fabulous work led by by Stephen and the team in advocacy and policy. Um, they really are achieving some marvelous um, work and, and getting libraries noticed by organizations that don't automatically sometimes think of libraries so that's great. Um, we put out our 2023 trend report, not to be confused with the new 24 trend report that we'll be um, launching in, in Lisbon. And um, But the current edition, I think what is particularly um, pleasing and exciting about the 2023 one is that it's based very much on the inputs of emerging leaders and really focused on how we can maximise our positive impact. So do take a look at it. And we know that our standards are our most consulted resource and that they continue to represent a key means both for sharing good practices and enabling cooperation. And so the revision of our standards manual is also a really important moment. So looking very much at that. And on the slide, what you can see is the third edition also of the world through picture books. 
and it's one of our highest profile publications, celebrating both children's literature and highlighting the key role of libraries in, in building a love of reading in the young. Um, perhaps less artistic, but, but also critical, is our Marrakesh monitoring report. And that provides data on which countries have signed up to the Marrakesh Treaty and so committed to removing unnecessary barriers to access to knowledge for persons with print disabilities. And crucially, it also notes which governments have more to do and represents an important reference point for those looking to work across borders. And finally, we've continued to produce our newsletters and I do hope you read them. They're full of really fantastic information and great articles. And the most recent one um, was on a topic very close to my own heart, which is diversity, equity and inclusion. And there is some really fantastic material um, that came from our professional units from that. So do take a look. It's a great place um, to get loads of information, some really thoughtful articles and very topical subjects. So thank you very much. I think over to you, Vicky, you. Uh, I think talking about the governing board. Yes. Um, so as I've mentioned a few times already, we do have our first face-to-face -face meeting of the governing board in The Hague next week. And there's quite a bit on the agenda. And on here, I've list, we've listed uh, a few of the items that will be discussed. We will be finalising the financial accounts for 2023. The auditor will be coming to the Finance and Risk Committee and also to the General Assembly, uh, to the um, governing board rather, to uh, pr present the, the financial report and the audit report. And that needs to be done because we need to share those in advance of the General Assembly and present them to the General Assembly on the 20th of June. As I mentioned earlier, of course, uh, the future sustainability of IFLA is something that the Governing Board is very interested in, and we'll be having a workshop around how we actually ensure that we have a sustainable future looking towards ahead um, in the decades ahead. Uh, we have a workshop on, uh, on one of the afternoons to explore that particular topic. We're also very focused on our governance and transparency. And again, that was a commitment that we made at our first meeting of the current governing board in August, that we really wanted to have a focus on having strong communication with our members and our volunteers. We've taken a number of steps already in our communications, sharing information following each governing board meeting. Um, and also this town hall is another one of the initiatives of well in actually having the transparency around the work that we are doing. Um, and as Sharon mentioned earlier, we're really keen to hear from you about if you have other ideas around what we can do to ensure that we're keeping you informed of the work of IFLA. We've also, of course, in the recent months, have a number of surveys that actually enable you as uh, members and volunteers of IFLA to provide feedback on the future directions of IFLA. And uh, as I mentioned, the IFLA strategy will consider that as well. We'll also have the draft IFLA strategy at the meeting on um, next week. Um, and that'll be the first opportunity for the governing board to have a look at the draft. We did have a workshop on the IFLA strategy at our December meeting. After the December meeting, there was the Pulse surveys. So hopefully you had the opportunity to participate in those. And then next week, the April meeting, we have the first draft. And following that meeting, we will share more information around that strategy. I can see um, in the chat there's some questions around future uh, congresses and what's happening for Willick 2025. Uh, the governing board will receive a briefing on the response to the expression of interest that was um, made for Willick 2025. So that will be discussed um, next week as well. And again, the outcomes of that discussion will be shared with members. We also had a question earlier around IFLA 100, and again, that is on the agenda for the uh, governing board next week. IFLA is 100 in 2027. It's a significant milestone for any association, and so we're commencing our planning now to ensure that it's actually a celebration of what has been achieved by this federation across 100 years. 
We'll also have updates from our professional council, regional council, and the management of library associations section. And um, I can see that the chairs of, of those um, groups are on the call today as well. So uh, hello to Tapai and I know Loida. Is, is listening as well, I'm, and I'm not sure. I think um, Alessandro may be in the wrong time zone at the moment, but um, uh, that's an important part of getting updates on the work that um, these committees are progressing for IFLA. We've also uh, added into the agenda that we will have updates from our advisory committees at each of the com um, governing board meetings. And next week, we will have an update from the copyright and other legal matters um, advisory committee as well. So, of course, we the, the, um, the governing board meets for three days. So there is a lot that we'll be cover, but um, and these are some of the key topics that uh, we will cover next week. And, and of course, we will provide a full report to our members the following week as well. So I think we then go to the next slide. Um, Sharon, do you want to take us through some of the upcoming opportunities for engagement? Yes, of course. Um, so I think, you know, we've got quite a lot coming up. We've been fairly busy, but there's a lot, there are a lot of opportunities to engage. So um, already this month, you can expect to see the opening um, of the possibility to comment on the first draft of our next strategy, as, as Vicky has just said, after the governing board has, has discussed it next week. Um, and the process of reviewing uh, LIC is also underway, and there'll be the, a first public um, to pulse survey on this, plus there'll be some outreach to associations to find out about your work around climate action. But just coming back to the LIC review, I see that Leslie Weir is on um, this call, and it's actually Leslie who's really leading this. And I know that this is a, an area that uh, a subject that many people are interested in. Now, I was recently in Stockholm with um, with Kirsten Volt, who's also on the call, and that was a, a looking and feeding into the LIC review was very much at the top of their agenda. So do look out for those opportunities. It is, you know, your conference. It's our conference. So please do get involved and, and give your feedback to that. I know Leslie will really welcome that. Um, and then in May, we'll be holding a town hall meeting to talk through the draft of the new strategy and to get some direct comments from you and some, some input and views. And you'll be able to continue to share those ideas online. There'll be opportunities to do that. And we'll also ensure that you can ask any additional questions you have on our shift to a, a charity status and the rest of the uh, General Assembly agenda. Um, and then we'll also be starting the consultative phase of the trend report. And finally, in June, we have our General Assembly. Um, and, you, you know, if anybody happens to be in The Hague, you're very welcome to attend in person. It would be lovely to have some people there. Um, but if not, we've got, I think, some very good tech support to make sure that we can have a much better participation at a hybrid level than we perhaps have had, had in the past. Um, and we'll also be doing the uh, consultation, a full consultation as part of the um, LIC review, and there will be further engagement on the trend report so that everything is ready to launch in Brisbane in September. And um, those are the main things coming up. So I think um, perhaps back to you, Vicky. Thank you very much, Sharon. Certainly a lot happening and uh, um, it's fantastic to see the work that's being progressed um, across the globe by both the IFLA team, but also all of our members of committees as well. So we now do have some opportunity to um, look at the questions that um, we've received. Um, it's it's um, it's always interesting doing these things on online platforms. You have so many different spaces you need to look. So um, I'm just going to skim through the chat um, so there was a question around, um, will there be a facilitated discussion on Indigenous issues? So um, from Winston. Um, so yes, I guess I, I do think that um, Indigenous issues will come up, uh, particularly around uh, decolonisation, cultural heritage, uh, Indigenous languages, preservation, those sorts of things. We do have a keynote speaker who will be speaking at the Congress. And um, uh, I was just speaking with her today um, Anna Vodulak, um, uh, who is um, 
Oh, I'll just have to, um, we'll cover some of those topics as well, but we'll also have a panel session which will cover some of those topics um, as well. I know that many people are very keen to see the detailed program, and so we will be able to release that on our website uh, next week, um, and that will give you the details of when the plenary speakers are speaking um, and then how the panel sessions engage and also build on from those plenary sessions as well. Um, our opening um, our opening speaker will be uh, Marek Kalkovic, um, and he will be, he's written a book on the economy of algorithms and the digital rise of the digital minions. Uh, so that whole whole topic of artificial intelligence that's uh, um, having so much interest across the globe will kick us off um, as well. And so on the first day, we'll be exploring the uh, the trend report. Um, we'll have the presentations by uh, Michael Deswani and Kim Osman. And um, and then have opportunities to unpack the um, the trends in that trend report as well. Sharon, can you see any questions there that you wanted to respond to? We do have a comment that um, someone considers that the ambi status is is non controversial. So I think that's. Oh. I think that's a, a promising comment, um, yeah. and I guess it is really just a, us achieving that charity status. And I know that many libraries across the globe would also have a similar charity status. I know my library has charity status, and that enables us to have uh, partnerships and receive funding from new sources. So that really is what sits behind IFLA seeking to have a similar charity status as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I mean, looking looking at the um, the questions, I think there are quite a few that are probably uh, longer uh, need longer answers. But for example, um, Stephanie Gasner, who said a lot of things have happened in IFLA during the last two or three years, um, will we at the will the at the summit be space to critically and constructively discuss? I think that's a really I mean, it's a, you know it's an important question. Um, I don't know whether you want to answer that one, Vicky, or whether you, you know, I can sort of, whether you want me to say something about that, but I think... I'll let you say, because I was reading some of the questions to prep. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, so I, I I think, you know, a lot of things have happened, um, but I, I think what we're, what we're really trying to do now is to look constructively and positively to the future. Uh, you know, I'm, as, as many of you know, I've only been here since last June, um, we have a new governing board that that started around the same time. We've got some. I think it's we've got a great governing board, a really great governing board, and we're all very much aligned to focusing on the future, not ignoring the past, uh, but trying to address some of those questions. And I think the way we're trying to do it is to um, concretely, rather than just talk about it, we're trying to concretely improve inf um, our communication channels, concretely trying to get views and, and contributions, and really listen to what people think and the way you know we we want to look forward and looking at the new the new strategy and the trend report are I think great opportunities for people to to contribute to the future and the thinking of um of, of IFLA and over the coming months we're we're going to be experimenting with a few other ways of, of improving engagement so there are always opportunities to talk about the past my personal view is to say well what is it that makes you want to be a member what is it that makes you want to be part of and have a real stake in the future of, of IFLA and and that would be where I'd like the focus of the conversation to be um so that that's I guess my take on that question and I I think you know um Vicky you may want to to add add to that but uh that would be my take. Let's look forward together and build the federation we all want that is globally relevant and where we all feel comfortable. Um, I'll agree, Sharon. I think you know, certainly my presidential theme is stronger together, and that is really about 
looking forward, thinking about how we can work together to have a stronger outcomes for our federation, um, but also for our own libraries and our own communities as well. And uh, this governing board is putting significant effort into uh, setting the federation up for a strong future. And um, and certainly the, that's what we are focused on is that strong future for the federation, a federation that we're all really proud to be part of. I know we're all, many of us are volunteers and um, and that's what we want from this federation is to to have it achieving strong outcomes and uh, and I think some of the activities that we've talked about this evening have really demonstrated that focus. Um, just looking through the questions, I can see there's a couple of colleagues from the Netherlands who've mentioned that their um, their uh, libraries or so institutions have ANBI status and that it's very positive and enabling for them. Um, I see a comment from Shadi Shadrach about um, the IFLA SIG on AI is keen to do a MOOC. So I think, Shadi, if you reach out to one of the IFLA team, um, we can take that further um, offline with you as well. Um, great. Um, but also, I think just going back to the question, we can see that people um, are really pleased about the positive work that IFLA is doing, so um, which is good to have that feedback. Um, Leslie Weir, who, who Helen um, Sharon did mention, um, is leading our review of the Congress model, has, has just posted a reminder that there'll be some pulse surveys coming out on the future of the Congress. I know that we all have a very special uh, attraction and, and very much enjoy the Congress, but, you know, we also will all have the opportunity to provide input into that review. So do keep an eye out for that pulse survey in April. And, uh, and I think there will also be a session at the summit where there will be an opportunity for to get an update on that review progress as well, with further, yes, as well. Um, th there are some other questions in the Q&A and not just in the chat. I don't know whether you've had a look. Um, yeah, so, yeah, sorry. Um, so it was really uh, the... A couple of questions which I think are important ones because it's again how we work as a how we are a genuinely global organization um, and talking about the enabling environment a question about the enabling environment um, to help African countries be fully involved in much of the activities and programs and even giving them the opportunity to host an IFLA conference or summit and there's also and I think in, in some ways tied into that um, another question about uh, how the new governing board is planning to handle the problem of um, what what uh, described as third world countries organising VLIC and their attitude towards LGBT persons and our SIGs. So I think that that this is one of the things we want to to look at. And, and Leslie um, Weir, who's leading this, I'm sure will be looking at this. We WLIC isn't the only way that we work um, globally around the world. We have our volunteer groups, and I think what we're doing, and Stephen's leading this work with our regional council and regional divisions, and in fact, the Sub-Saharan African um, regional division is, I think, a, a, just an incredibly dynamic group. And so specifically for Africa, um, I highly recommend reaching out to them because they are doing some incredible work we held a workshop in Nairobi back in October, which was absolutely brilliant and, and some great work happening there. So use that channel of the, um, of the regional divisions and the reg regional committees, look at to see who they are. All of their names are on the, um, on the website, but again, you can also reach out to either me or to Stephen to find out who it is to, to, to reach out to. We have a huge amount of information. And we've also been making some changes, I think, internally in IFLA headquarters. And we've now got a new manager of the communities of practice and member engagement. So she's also going to be reaching out and doing quite a lot of activity to bring members together. Um, and I, I think the whole thing around, um, you know, I, we don't have the time to get into a, a major conversation about uh, LGBT issues, which is which is complex. Um, and but I do feel that what what we need to be looking at, and I know that this is an area we're, we're thinking about, is 
is to say it again, Wulik is not the only way in which we engage the world <laughs> with the world. It is one of the vehicles. Um, it's an important one, but it's only one of the vehicles. And what we are really looking at is how we really engage um, and have meaningful events in different parts of the world. And, and I, you know, the workshops we've done, which have been fantastic. I know that Lloyda, um, another governing board member, the MLAS chair who's on the call, uh, she and, and the group have been really dynamic in, um, in developing um, a program and they've got a major event happening in Kazakhstan. So there are lots of things happening. And I think it's looking at how the best way we can engage with every part of the world. Um, you know, a lick is a major event. It, it costs a lot of money to do, and we it's never possible to do anything everywhere. But there are lots of other ways that every part of the world and every group and every interest can engage in what is our federation. This is our organization, and every voice um, needs to be heard. Um, I don't know whether you have Thank anything you. to add. Thank you. Well, I was just going to say, you mentioned the Sub-Sahara Group. I mean, I was it was fantastic to have the opportunity to attend their workshop in uh, Nairobi last October. And I can see just from that one gathering how much work has been progressed by, by that group coming together. So I think they can be congratulated and it just shows that you can come together in many different ways to progress work. Um, one question that I did want to answer, because I have seen it come up a few times, uh, there's been some questions around um, what will be available online from the summit. So we will have the opening and closing sessions available on YouTube. Um, and so people will be able to access those um, after the summit as well. So that was a question that we've had asked a couple of times as well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Actually, Stephen, does that mean you want to? Oh no, it's open questions. Okay, that's fine. Sorry, I saw a message on the Q and A and thought you might want to do. You might want to say something too. Um, I think do you think that we've covered many of the questions um, um, that have been asked? Um, I think that the key thing I really want to emphasise is that we will continue to have these opportunities, the town hall sessions where people can join us and ask questions. Uh, you can submit questions in advance as well, uh, which we did have some and we've addressed those. So um, that is um, really important. Um, and um, I see there's a question around visas. Um, we um, we uh, made some arrangements with the uh, Department of Foreign Affairs in Trade in Australia who handle visas um, and registered the summit with them, which will help facilitate some of the visa work um, as well and hopefully um, make it a little bit easier. I know for some countries, it, the visa in different countries can be quite difficult. So we're really looking to, to see how how we can work to support colleagues from different countries to um, access their visas. And that information will be updated on the website as well. Um, but as I was saying, we will continue to have uh, really frequent uh, information around the summit, but also the work that we're progressing. And certainly in the lead up to the General Assembly in June, we'll share a lot of information around what will be covered in the General Assembly as well. So Sharon, before I end, is there any other questions that you can see that we haven't um, responded to? I think we've got most of them uh, now. Um, I'm just checking actually on the questions we, we got in advance um, to see if there's anything that we have missed. Um, See, yeah. there's a comment around Willix being hybrid, and I think that is part of. So, thank you very much for to Samoja for that question. I think they're very much the sorts of things that Leslie will be looking. Leslie and the group that are working with her on the Willix review will be looking at is what are the options for Willix in the future? Um, how do we ensure that they're sustainable? Um, Congresses are very expensive events to deliver, um, and uh, I know that there was a comment earlier around. And it's difficult for some countries to host a Willick. So these are all the sorts of things that the Willick Review needs to consider. Um, and of, as we've mentioned, there'll be an opportunity for you to provide input through the Pulse Survey, firstly in April and then June and September as well. 
So sorry, Sharon, I cut you off. Uh, no, I was just looking at the questions that we received um, in advance, and I think we covered most of them. There was a specific question about if they pay for their registration um, and then don't get a visa, will the registration fee be refunded? And my understanding is um, yes, the, uh, but the information should be on the website. So you should be able to find that answer there now. And if it's not, we'll check. Um, Looking at, uh, there's a question which is how can we best share our ideas with the governing board going forward? Is there a formal channel of communication set up for us? Um, well, I, I think obviously this is this is an opportunity, but then afterwards, you know, it, it it's very easy for people, I hope, to just, you know, do send send a message and emails. And we'll, I think this is something that Stephen and I are thinking about um, how we how we get that direct, how we improve that two-way communication really between members and the governing board. So we've got a few ideas and I think we'll be sharing some of those um, um, a little later. There was a question, which I think Vicky has answered, but I think it's worth uh, repeating this, a question about how many people from a national association are entitled to attend the Australian meeting. As many as you, and the answer is as many as, as wish to attend. There is there are no limits, so anyone um, can can attend. Um, and um, also, I think that uh, I think the other areas are fairly. There's a very specific one about funding resources um, for projects for the restoration and preservation of um, antiquarian um, bibliographic material. Um, I would suggest that if that's it's so specific, just send us an email and we'll see if there's somewhere we can um, point you in the right direction. Or... Okay. That's okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Sharon. It's been great to chat with you this evening. Um, thank you, Stephen, for doing the, the backroom work. Um, there's so many different um, aspects to these um, Zoom calls. It's it's hard to keep track. So thank you very much. Thank you to um, governing board colleagues who've um, been joining us online and um, providing some of the responses in the chat. And uh, and thank you everyone else for joining. It's fantastic to see so many people coming online, interested in the work that IFLA is doing and asking questions. And and as I said, we will um, we do meet in the Hague next week, and the week following we'll be sharing uh, the outcome of that meeting with you and what further opportunities there are for you to contribute to the work that we're doing. So I do hope to see you in Brisbane uh, in September, October. Uh, as I've said a number of times, it's a beautiful city to visit. Uh, there's so much to see in Australia um, and it is also a beautiful time of year with spring as well. So I look forward to seeing you online again very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Goodbye. See you soon.